In Florida, testing goes on for Project Vanguard at the Air Force Missile Test Center. From Cape Canaveral, the Air Force, the Army, and the Navy fire missiles and rockets out over downrange tracking stations stretching 5,000 miles into the South Atlantic. The field crew makes ready to launch Viking number 13, designated TV0 in the Vanguard test program. The purpose of the test, chiefly, to evaluate NRL tracking and telemetering equipment to be used later in the program. Preparations start in daylight for a launch set to go on the night of December 7, 1956. is a success. Tracking and telemetry both check out in satisfactory fashion. The altitude, 110 miles. Impact point, 170 miles downrange at the designated point near the Grand Bahama Island. TV-1, a rocket to test Vanguard's third stage propulsion unit under flight conditions. Tape recording brought back from the blockhouse draws groups of engineers who listen in on the launch of TV-1 and the successful separation 120 miles up. Plus 40 seconds. Plus 2, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. Plus 265. Plus 275. Set to go on a cloudy, overcast October day. This is the full Vanguard configuration. But the internal components are not complete. There is no satellite. And the second and third stages are dummies. area test to check out the rocket's aerodynamic characteristics and the performance of the first stage propulsion system. A successful flight, the third in the Vanguard program, three for three, but not one of the three tests combined enough of the functions of the full three-stage rocket to permit even an attempt at putting a satellite into space. Dawn, December 4th, 1957. This is the time set to fire TV-3. The first full dress vanguard complete with three and a quarter pound satellite. But the winds blew hard, 20 miles an hour, a little higher than the 17 mile an hour limit. But there are other troubles, particularly a leak in the liquid oxygen disconnect valve. The next try comes the 6th of December. Four, three, two, one, Fire. mark.
The night of February the 5th, TV3 backup makes another try. Three, two, one, Fire. mark. <laughs> At 20,000 feet, the control system fails and the rocket tumbles and breaks apart. Vanguard 1 launched in 1958 achieved an initial perigee of 409 miles and an apogee of 2,465 miles. It may stay up for hundreds of years. This satellite's electric eyes will scan the Earth's cloud cover, broadcasting data never before attainable. The weather station's batteries will last only two weeks, but it will usher in a new era of global weather forecasting. A scientific triumph for the new civilian space agency, the launching is a vindication for the sleek three-stage Vanguard space vehicle. One of the most technically sophisticated of the space rockets, the misfortune-plagued Vanguard six times failed in widely publicized launching attempts only once placed a three-pound baby moon in orbit. But on this day, Vanguard outdoes her designer's hopes. She soars aloft to join four other satellites still orbiting the Earth, three American, one Russian. Defense Department films show the perfect flight, mathematically flawless all the way, that carries the weather satellite into an orbit even farther out than hoped for, assuring a lifespan of decades, perhaps centuries, for America's eye in space. Vanguard 3 was also placed in orbit late in 1959. In shape, the satellite resembled an ice cream cone. During the three months its equipment was in operation, Vanguard not only gave us our first accurate count of micrometeorites, but also supplied the first comprehensive survey of the Earth's magnetic field.